Well, good morning. I want to talk to you today about vision. And the reason we're talking about vision, partly it flows from last week. We were talking about those who love Jesus, keep his commands. And that means listening to him. And so we want to like share again what we've been hearing from God for us as a church, us as a local church. And if you're listening internationally, I'm sure it'll be relevant for you wherever you are. But there are specific things God has said to us. Second reason why it's great to share this now is that it's August. It's kind of like summertime. Everyone's a bit chill, but it's a great time to kind of prepare and get ready for the busyness of September when it's all back to school, back to serious work in the office and all the challenges begin. So turn with me in your Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, like Big, important passage for us as a church. That's why I keep going there. But I'm going to share some fresh things with you today. So Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and we're going to read from verses 1 all the way to verse 9. Hopefully some of you are learning this off by heart by now. Like You're like, yeah, we know exactly what it says. But here we go. God will speak to us afresh through his word. Father, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road, Whatever house you enter, first say to it, peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. All right, so the first thing I want us to see that Jesus did is he like picked leaders. 72, it says in the passage I'm reading from, other versions say 70, but it was just a bunch of leaders. And he did that because the mission could not be accomplished without leaders, because Jesus' goal was to multiply disciples that would hear of him, become like him and experience his spirit. And he wanted to multiply that message through you and I, through leaders. And so as a church, that's our number one priority because the mission won't be accomplished without that and because we want to obey Jesus. But there's another because. There's another reason why. The reason why is because it's what you're made for. It's going to be the most fulfilling life you can live when you live as a leader. Because in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we see when God made man, made them in his image, he gave them this mandate to be fruitful and multiply and take dominion in the earth. To lead the earth from heaven to earth, the earth would be like heaven. And if you're a Christian, actually God calls you a king and a priest in other words, you're a spiritual influencer. I know we've got Instagram influencers. You're a spiritual influencer. And leadership is influence. So one of the major responsibilities we have as a church when people join, when people become Christians, is to help them walk in freedom from the things that are controlling their lives. Like the most obvious example of that, people controlled by drug addiction or, or alcohol. We want to see the power of God coming into those situations so that they are free to follow Jesus, to come under his leadership so that his leadership can be expressed through them. And you know the major way that people get free from addiction? It's actually in the midst of relationship with others. Like there's a, a study called Rat Park done years ago and they addicted rats to heroin and they put them in these cages on their own. They gave them heroin water or regular nutrient filled water. And like the rats on their own in the cage would just take that heroin until they died. Whereas they put the same kind of addicted type of rats into what they called Rat Park, where there's a whole kind of like play area for rats, other rats to socialize with, like community of rats. And guess what? They could take or leave the heroin water. They actually, 
had the nutrient water and they generally maintained lives of freedom. And so here's one of the things that we're going after. And you can see it in this passage. We're looking at raising up leaders who will foster loving, caring community. If you see in this passage, the leaders that Jesus raises up, he sends them into homes. And so our next priority is to raise up leaders that can actually care and create community in homes. That's going to be their own home. That's other people's home. Some of you are going to do that in your workplace. Some of us in pubs uh, and all kinds of interesting environments as this rolls out. But it begins with raising up leaders. So last month, uh, we invited a whole lot of you to come around my home, hear about the vision of how to do that. And loads of you came. We're really excited. Uh, I know more of you are coming this evening to hear more about the vision. But the next step is going to be this. In September, those of you who want to lead small groups, we're inviting you to join a small group in my home. <laughs> because we want to invest in you. We want to give you a taste and experience of what it feels like to really be loved on, ministered to, week in, week out. Uh, my own little rat park. <laughs> Heavenly park. Uh, and so uh, if, You've signed up to lead and when you've had a conversation with us about that, Tuesdays, you can join a small group in my home. Or if you can't make Tuesdays, Wednesdays, you can join a small group in my home. Or if you can't make Wednesdays, Fridays. But I will be asking you as a leader to join one of those three and stick to that day. So you can experience being around a community with others, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Friday. More information is going to be coming about that, but that's going to be going on in September as we first look to raise leaders. That's going to be every single week uh, for at least six weeks. That's September into October. But let's have a look now at the second major priority of Jesus. Let's read verse two again. And Jesus said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into his harvest. Here's the point I want us to understand. Leaders that are not led by the love of God, that are not led by encounter with the love of heaven, the love of Jesus, will just be clanging symbols go look up 1 Corinthians chapter 13 like we need to be experiencing the spirit of God and so Jesus makes prayer the first priority and and that's like twofold number one like he's praying or encouraging them to pray that there will be more leaders there'll be this multiplication of leaders so it's for them but it's also for them themselves there are these different metaphors that Jesus uses of, of prayer in the scripture. Like he talks about the, the ten virgins, that parable, and, and how the foolish ones, they didn't keep filled up with oil. And that's really a metaphor for like prayer and receiving the Holy Spirit, like his love, his power. We're meant to be led by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit on fire. So... Here's our second priority as a church, second priority of Jesus. In September, while leaders are going to small groups, learning how to lead groups, growing in that, at the same time, every single Sunday, we're going to be teaching prayer on these videos in the afternoon and really growing this understanding of the importance of the practice of prayer. And we're going to be going into the practicalities of the practice of prayer. But we're also going to be doing something else. And it's actually not in verse two, it's in verse one. Do you see what Jesus did with his leaders? He paired them up. He sent them out two by two. And like this is like a model and a metaphor that repeats throughout scripture from like Noah sent the animals being sent into the ark and out of the ark two by two from Samson when he's looking to defeat the enemy. He ties foxes tails together in twos and lights them up and sends them out. It's a pattern of partnership that's all the way through scripture and so as we're teaching prayer in September we're going to be encouraging everyone not just leaders to look to grab themselves a prayer partner think about that now pray about that now like if you've got existing 
twos and threes, triplets you're in. Maybe like you can like put a little bit of fresh fire under that to have someone that every week will be asking, how's it going in your prayer life? Like holding you to account to apply the principles that we'll be teaching week by week. Because everything, everything rises and falls on the power of praying people and particularly the power of praying leaders with their powerful praying partners. There's lots of peace right there. That's the vision of where we're going next. All right, the reason I'm sharing this with you now, like start of August, is so that we would pray ahead. We would prepare for what God wants to do amongst us in the autumn term. And so we're going to take a little bit of time right now, two minutes. And I want to ask you to really pray. If you're with other people, pray out loud, pray together. But I want you to pray for the fulfillment of God's plan for his church. First thing I want you to pray about, uh, maybe listen to God about, is your own leadership. Like, what's the calling on you as a leader in this church, in this season, or wherever you are in the world? Like, really come before God and remember the ones that Jesus picked. Book of Acts, it says they were ignorant, unschooled, ordinary people. So I think you qualify. So don't disqualify yourself, but ask the Lord, what does leadership look like for me? Uh, are you calling me to this in this season? Uh, and, and like if, you, if you're from the local church, you want to get involved, it's not too late to contact me and we can talk about which one of those evening groups you want to join in. Uh, second thing to pray about is like, who are you going to partner up with in September? Who's going to be an accountability buddy or partner to you? It doesn't even have to be someone from the church, but who can you be encouraging and who will be an encouragement to you in your prayer life? And the third thing I really want us to pray into right now is just that we get on and pray that actually our prayer lives will become, will come alive. Like here's a truth. I'm going to go on onto this in a few weeks time, but Whenever you want to take new territory in the spirit, it actually involves dispossessing the enemy who's occupied that spot. And so sometimes there's a little bit of a battle. So we want to pray ahead that when people like make resolutions, I want to pray in the morning, I want to pray in the evening, I want to extend my time of worship. I want to pray at this time or that time. I want to pray at work. I want to whatever strategies God lays on their heart to increase their time with him that actually the, it, they experience the grace of God because we've been praying ahead. So two minutes, pray on those three things, your leadership, your partnership, and the power of a praying church. Go for it. All right, God bless you, church. I hope you're excited about the autumn term. We will see the mission of God accomplished 
as we obey what he's called us to do. Father, I pray for every man, woman and child who's listened to this broadcast. Inspire us, empower us by your spirit to do and be what you've called us to do and be in Jesus name. God bless you, church. Have an amazing week. You are so, so loved.